Hey everybody, welcome to tonight's pour. Tonight's pour is going to be a commission piece. Yes, I had a show Saturday. It was a good show. I sold a lot of stuff. I sold seven of my Hot Wheels ones. A couple of them were my favorite ones. Uh, one was the brand new Bronco one that I did. And uh, it was really becoming, uh, I was really, really digging that one. I was really becoming pretty fond of it. And, uh, but it sold which is fine because I bought some more Broncos uh, the next day. Yesterday, I was able to go up to the flea market because I was busy Saturday, and I probably spent way too much too much money on uh, Hot Wheels. But I bought uh, three, at least three Broncos. They're all different. I bought the Bronco that was on that one, the same one, and then I bought a custom one, and then I bought a 2021 Bronco, so it's a newer style. But I'm going to do the same... I'm going to do three of those. Um, I just loved it so much. I love the, the white background. I was, I had contemplated on different colors for the background. I ended up going with white. I'm so glad I did because the browns on that just really, um, I don't know. It was just the, the texture of it. The, I don't know what it was. It was just, it just went so well. It, it had a, a different look to it. It's just, it was just amazing. And so I'm going to, do those in the future what i'm going to do tonight is a ferrari uh custom piece uh, i met a guy his name was tom um, he reached out to me the next day wanted to do the ferrari i talked to him briefly about the ferrari one when he was in my booth and uh so we collaborated on um you know the colors he wanted the car he wanted um, he didn't care about what year of Ferrari. He wanted a, a red one. It was his only request for the, it was, it was a red Ferrari is all he wanted. And then he wanted the colors from the logo. So he sent me a link to the logo. And, uh, which I've probably seen it a lot, but I never really paid attention to the colors. So it was actually in the link was, the picture was uh, mostly red in the background. But the logo section of it was yellow in the background with like the horse on it with the yellow background. And then it had a green, a white, and a red stripe, which I believe are the colors of the, that are on the flag for Italy. I think their country flag. So, because I, I don't know a lot about Ferraris, but I'm thinking that's where they are made or where they originally made. Uh, so that's probably why those three colors are on there. So what I decided to do was um, I want to go with a yellow background. Now I know a lot of people say, well, whew, yellow, that's kind of bold. Um, is it going to work? Well, I've done a couple pieces with the yellow background. They've both sold. They looked great. Um, I was a little, you know, the same way. I was a little, mm, I don't know. Uh, but it, turned out the first one turned out really well so that's why I did a second one and I have a, I bought, actually bought the first car I did um, I've already I bought it again and plan to do another one because the first one turned out so well so I'm gonna do a yellow background so then I'm gonna do instead of mixing the the green white and red together like I normally do and then just blow it out um, <clears throat> I think to try to stick with the the logo theme of the three stripes of the colors, the three it's just three stripes. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a green, a white, and then a red, and then I'm going to swipe it across, just to give it that a little bit extra. And it's going to be coming out the back of the car. Excuse me. So I've also decided to add silicone to the. Um, the paints to give it a little few more cells and uh, I think it will look cool coming out the back so I've, all I've got to do I've got my canvas out um, this was actually my last canvas of uh, 10 by 20s um, I was able to stop at Michael's yesterday uh, my wife and I were out um, after church and we were able to go out and go we had to go over to Indy for some stuff so I said Michael's was just down the road from where we were at 
And so we stopped in there. She got some stuff for her wreath that she makes. And then I was able to get, uh, I can buy six packs of these 10 by 20s. And I got three packs. So I have 18 um, 10 by 20s left. So I'm happy. And um, I didn't pick up any paints or anything, any extra supplies. I, I got quite a bit of paint. So, so I'm, I am using my last one that I had, but now I've got some more. So all I got to do is mix the paints. So I'm going to use the, this for the green. It's an emerald green. Daler Rowney is the brand. I do like this brand. I just can't find it in the stores. I think I can get it online. Uh, they have a Thalo turquoise that just is rich, rich, rich. My favorite uh, turquoise color a brand out there. And I bought these for like two... Two dollars and fifteen cents on clearance, and I had the couple bottles of Thalo turquoise. I went through those, loved it so much that I went on Amazon and found them, and have ordered them from Amazon, and they were not two dollars and fifteen cents. Believe me, they were like nine dollars and something. So, but even at these at Hobby Lobby are five ninety nine regular price. So, but I can't find them at Hobby Lobby anymore. So, but anyway, I got off on that color. So that's the brand. I do like the brand of most of the colors that they do. Um, but since it's a little bit more convenient to just buy Master's Touch at Hobby Lobby, that's what I use a lot of Artist Loft and Master's Touch. And sometimes some, uh, what is it? What is that? Liquid Tex. That's what it is. I had to look at one. So I'm using a lemon yellow for the yellow for the background. And then, of course, my red and white. I use mostly, um, well, I always use Artist Loft for white. And then mostly this red and Artist Loft as well. So those are the colors I'll be using. So I've already got some mixed up, um, some red and white there. So all I have to do is mix up the yellow and the green, and we can get started. For there. Okay, so I got the paints mixed, and uh, all I need to do is level my canvas. Again, if you're this is the first time you're watching some of my videos, you want to level your canvas because uh, if it's not level when it's drying, say it's leaning this way, it'll the paint will slowly run off, and you'll have what I call a paint slide. And I've lost a couple of really nice pieces uh, due to not being level. Um, I usually try to have it level. Evidently I didn't on, <clears throat> on this last particular one that I did that, and I uh, lost it and it was uh, heartbreaking really. So So I've used uh, some silicone. I put it, I already had some paints pre-mixed. It's the red and white. I usually, have, when I was used to use silicone, I never put it in my white or black. Um, probably only because that's how the people that I want learn how to, how to acrylic, fluid acrylic pour, the pour painting on YouTube that's what they said they never did, so I just never did. So I only put it in the regular colors. And so I, as you can see, probably there's, I put it in the yellow and in the green. Now I do have red that I'm going to be using, but it's already a pre-mixed paints and it's in a, or I pr had done it previously and I'll probably be using it for other ones that I don't use silicone in so I'm not going to put it in that's why I put it in the yellow uh, just so it had silicone in it that would help create cells so sorry about the sniffles now I, as soon as I stopped when I started uh, mixing my paints I started getting a sneezing fit and 
who knows what that's about. So I couldn't stop sneezing, so I had to go blow my nose, and now I'm all stuffy. But I will say for the show I had this weekend, one of the great things about a show, you never know what you're gonna, who you're gonna meet, what contacts you're gonna make, um, the people you're gonna see, you run into. So I met a couple of ladies, and again, this was in Greenfield, Indiana, where my show was. It's in the county I live in. It's the town of where I work. So I go there every day, pretty much. I was That's where we go to church at. So like this last week, I was there every day last week seven days in a row today would be eight days in a row that i've been there about i don't know we live probably about 15 20 minutes away but anyway i met these ladies that own uh uh this business called the gilded nest and they are artists and they have i don't know if it's like a gallery or some something to that effect I'll have, i'm talking with them later on this week but they teach they have some art classes so they like the one lady was uh does watercolors and so she teaches a class there um people sign up for a class and she teaches them how to watercolor so they were looking, They evidently they've been looking for a fluid acrylic artist, or they were just thinking about it, I'm not sure. But, I mean, they, uh, I was set, I was basically set up right, right next to one of the ladies. Her booth was like right behind me. And I was still setting up when she started to talk to me about it, saw my work. And so, oh yeah, she went and got the other lady, which was there, the, the co-owner. And so I came up, met her. And uh, so after a little bit of discussion and talking about the possibilities of me teaching a class there, and we'll probably finalize everything this week, but it looks like a done deal. And uh, so I will be teaching a probably class once a month. And so if you're in the Greenfield, Indiana area, and you're interested in, um, you know, taking a class from me, um, you have to, I guess you have to sign up at the Gilded Nest and pay them through there and uh, for when we have the classes set up we don't have any classes set up right now because we haven't finalized everything and i'm gonna go down and take a look at their place and see what size i have how many people i can have in a class excuse me and uh so yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be i'm, I'm really excited about it i have taught um a couple of groups of people one I, actually i was hired to do a birthday party for about uh, 10 or 12 uh young girls i think they were 10 or 11 years old and they all had a blast and then i was um before that i was asked to do a for this uh girls group uh ages i think 10 to 17 um, and it, they was like a community, a group of girls, community group. There's 25 or 30 of them. I think there was 20 some there when I, when I taught, but I just, I donated everything. I didn't charge them. Um, and I taught all of them how to a pour paint and they all got to paint a picture and they all had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with it. So.
I'm looking forward to doing that again. So. So I'm just giving a little texture and not so so much straight lines. Kind of pull that red in a little bit. It's a little too much. sink quite a bit. I do want some more white in there. Get that white out of there. Trying to thin it here where the car is going to sit so it's not so thick right up at the top. But it also will give it a little, a little,
tilt it just a little bit to run it down a little bit. I don't have a, this isn't the car I'm going to be using, but I just want to, it'll probably be about the same size. I just want to see what it looks like coming out of there. Oh yeah, I think that'll look good. So, there you have it. This is going to be a Ferrari one. It's going to have a red Ferrari on there. And... Like I said, it's the logo colors. Seems like I need to do something in here. Just leave you a little texture in there. All right, there you go. Now, since I use silicone on this, usually when you use silicone and you're gonna resin a piece, you need to clean it. And I have never cleaned one actually myself. I've done a few 
um, with silicone on them that I've resined. Um, what I do is I seal it with a gloss enamel and I haven't had any problems so far. So that's what I'm going to do with when this one dries. I will seal it with a, um, a really good coat of uh, gloss enamel that will keep, uh, It'll basically cover up all that silicone so that when I put the resin on, the, the silicone won't separate the resin and leave, because it leaves you rings and spots that don't, the resin won't uh, attach to the canvas and it looks terrible. So I think that's what I'll be doing on this one because I did use silicone in it. I don't think I really needed to use silicone in it because it didn't do the effect that I wanted it to do, but... I think it still turned out pretty good so I think he'll like it I uh, hope so I'll take a picture of it with the car sitting on it before I even resin it uh, just to make sure he likes it if not then I'll have to paint uh, paint it again and uh, I mean if he doesn't like this particular one and I have to repaint it again I do have the other Ferrari car that I could do and do a Ferrari one for myself to sell uh, to somebody else so um, but we'll see. Hopefully he'll like it. And uh, so all we have to do is wait for it to dry. Then I can seal it and resin it. And hopefully the car will be here by then. And then we can get this uh, bad boy um, done and to the client. All right. Uh, this, this one is dried and I've got it ready to go. I've got it taped on the back as you can see. So it's all taped up, so it's easy to pull off uh, the the little droplets that dry on it when it's uh, ready to ready to go. And uh, trying to get this level on here. I got so much buildup on these. I need to replace them. I got some stuff ordered uh, to replace it. So I got my car on there. This is a ten by twenty canvas. I'm using Pro Marine resin can't remember if I've already said this in a video so forgive me if I'm repeating myself but I use the art resin calculator online and it is for um, calculating how much resin you need for a, a canvas a 10 by 20 canvas is seven ounces total three and a half ounces of the hardener and three and a half ounces of the epoxy and you mix it uh, at least the brand that I have I think it's three minutes I usually do right around three minutes or a little bit less so um, I'm, I'm ready to get going on this one. So I've got the car ready sitting here and, uh, I've already got, I, I did order the car and so I have it right here. So it's a Ferrari, red Ferrari. Um, I'm not sure what year it is, but it's a little bit more sporty one. And so it'll go right there. So that's kind of what it'll look like. And uh, one, so let's get started on here. One of the things that changed since I did start this one, um, as you know, this was for a client who contacted me after meeting me at a, a festival. Actually contacted me the very next day after the festival. And he had talked to me at, at it in my booth about the Ferrari. He emailed me the next day. I emailed him back, and uh, he yelled, emailed, we emailed back and forth uh, for what he wanted and everything that he wanted. He even sent me a link to the logo of the Ferrari, which is what he wanted was the colors of the logo. And uh, I thought that was nice. And so I painted it. I had to order the car online and so i painted the painting ahead of time so it was ready to go for when i got the car and i could just go ahead and resin it and it'd be done wouldn't have to wait and so i got the car in the mail came down here painting had already dried and so what did i do i took a, I set the car on it took a picture of it Right, to send to the send to this guy, and I said, 
Well, I have I haven't finished. I mean, I haven't resined it yet, but I wanted to make sure I set the car on there before I resin it to make sure that you, this is what you want. And if it's not, let me know and I will either paint over this one or paint another one. I don't hear from him for a couple days. Which was weird because when he first contacted me, he was he was responding to his emails, you know, in a timely fashion within 15, 20 minutes of you know me sending and sometimes even quicker than that. Something well, you know, eh, you know. Maybe he didn't see it, maybe he deleted it by accident. I know I delete. I get a lot of junk mail, so I delete a lot of messages, emails off of my phone real fast. And usually I see it at the very last minute after I've already trashed it. I mean, I can usually go back and recover it, but. Uh, so I thought, well, maybe that happened. So I gave it a couple days. And still don't hear anything. And so. Um, I sent him another email with a picture of it again, just to make sure don't hear anything. So I send another email. I mean, I'm hoping I'm not bothering this guy, but I'm like, you know, you're the one that wanted this. Do you want it or not? I was nice. I was polite. And I was like, you know, if this isn't what you want, I'm happy to repaint it for you. Um, cause I want you to get what you want. I don't want you just buying something from me just to buy something from me. I want him to appreciate it. I want him to like it. I want it to be what he wants. Don't hear from him. So I never heard from him again. It's been a few weeks now. So I decided to just go ahead and paint in resonant. Not paint it. I go ahead and resin it and just sell it to at a show because I'm sure it will sell. I mean, it's a Ferrari. Everybody likes Ferraris, or most people do. And I'm sure I have been asked a couple times about Ferraris. If I had a Ferrari. Everybody always asks for something that I don't have. Whereas if I do have it, that particular car is not the right color. I had a, somebody asked me for a 57 Chevy. I said, yeah, I have one right here. Oh, I need it to be yellow. Well, it's not yellow. So, that's why I get a lot of commission pieces. Um, or at least a lot of people saying they want a commission piece. It's because they want a specific car. There has been a couple people that have actually reached back out to me and, and followed up on it. And I made it for them and they loved them and they bought them and everybody's happy. But that's a do say the majority I don't hear from. But this one was even more frustrating because, I mean, I wouldn't be so, I wouldn't be as frustrated if I was able to just go to the, go to the store or I had it in my collection and spend a dollar or two on a car. That's not going to bother me because I can always paint it, paint, paint, paint it, you know. And so that didn't really bother me, but this was not a one or two dollar car. This was actually about fifteen, sixteen dollar car online. And I wouldn't have bought it if it wasn't for uh, this person wanting this car on, on a painting. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and finish it. I thought about keeping it in my collection, but I'd already taken it out of the package because I figured it would go up in value anyway because it's a Ferrari. But I'd already taken out of the package to take a picture of it to send to him because I was pretty sure he would probably pretty much like it. Or if not, then I would repaint another one. I guess I didn't anticipate him just not, not responding at all to me. So let me walk on this side just to make sure I don't have any.
right, so here we go. We're going to place the car in there. And there goes the $15 car in the resin. So that's where that car is going to stay for the rest of its life. So I think it looks good. Um, I'm really not too, I don't want you to get the wrong idea, like I'm really annoyed with this guy, but it is annoying. I'd rather, I'd rather if you, if you didn't like it, I mean, I want him to tell me that he didn't like it. And I'd definitely, I'd be more than happy to paint what he wants. I don't want him taking something he doesn't, or if he didn't like it, I don't know, maybe he just didn't want to tell me he didn't like it. So he just didn't say anything at all. I don't know. But it's got this spot on it right here. separating right there. Let me get this resin. This is just gonna keep separating right there. It might just be, I don't know, I can't remember if I use silicone in this one or not. I might have and I sprayed it, but I don't think silicone would have been up there on that part of the painting. It would have been just right in here. So I don't know. All right, well, that's, we're just gonna leave it like that and uh, Hopefully it'll stay about like what it is now. All right. Thanks for watching.